So, okay. So the first thing I'd like to talk about today is um, Java methods. Um, a method is is a, is a set of, um, of code um, uh, that that accomplishes some purpose, or or to put it another way, it performs a task. It it, it computes something, it changes something like the location, something on the screen, or who's connected with who, and it uh, may or may not return a value. Okay. Um, uh, methods are the names used for so that sort of. Um, general description could apply, it goes by several names, functions, subroutines, routines, um, and methods. Methods are a very specific sort of, of these sort of things because they operate on a, on a uh, instance of a class, on an object typically. The one exception is to it, you can have methods that operate, which are associated with the class as a whole, and those are called static. They're methods that aren't associated with a particular instance of the class, like a particular person. Instead, it's something that it's a service offered by person in general. And a method really wraps up a service of sorts. And there's a contract associated with that service. If you give it certain information in the form of what are called its parameters or arguments, okay, you can hear those, both those terms being used for it, that's some information you pass to it. You give it information like the X in Y location you want it to move a person to. So remember that move to method we use person dot move to, which allowed people to go back and forth from the grocery stores. Um, that method you have to provide an X and a Y location to move to. Once you provide that, it performs a purpose, uh, a service for you. It will have the person start moving at, at some set previously set velocity. So you can think of a, a method as providing a service. And um, normally we think of an object um, in, in Java as offer having some state, having some information within it. Um, from a from a, any logic perspective, this may be the parameters or variables within it, that's as where it is in its state charts, those sort of things. So it's kind of the data stuff. And then it provides services. It provides these methods which allow you to ask it information or get it to do things. Okay, um, and uh, there's a there's a best practice. Uh, so, ooh. okay, sorry, folks. I thought that was already displaying. Um, there we go. Let's uh, let's do this. Um, um, no. Um, Let's figure this out. Okay, so um, one of the best practices in software engineering is uh, creating methods that encapsulate commonly needed jobs or jobs that are important. Um, so um, uh, when we sorry, I'm just uh, trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, when we build uh, So uh, when we build a, um, a model, typically we want to, there's a lot of functions which are defined by any logic itself, but um, we typically want to write our own functions because those functions capture commonly needed functionality. They capture things that otherwise would be repeated many, many places throughout a, uh, a model. So um, we're going to be, um, uh, we're going to be exploring today how you create these methods and um, and why you create them, okay? Um, so, uh, pardon me while I'm um, straightening out this issue, but I'll, I'll continue to try to talk. Um, okay, so um, one of the big reasons we create methods is that um, without methods to, to define the functionality associated with something, if we have, we just, um, instead of packaging up functionality in a method, we, um, we instead just sort of repeat things throughout our code, it's fragile because it may change. Things uh, that we end up repeating may have to be changed across the many uses of them. So commonly we, we will um, create a method which ends up, um, ends up sort of capturing that commonly needed, um, that commonly needed um, set of functionality so that it can be uh, reused, um, reused from, from many, many places. Okay, um, I may need to get tech step in here if this continues, but um, I'm, I'm keeping on going for the moment. Okay, um, so um, 
The idea here is to divide up um, to divide up the functionality, the services offered by a given object, a given class, um, say the person class, into a set of pieces that um, that are each independent and that can be specified independently. And we do that so that um, when we're writing a model, we can simply call one of those rather than having to, to do all that work ourselves. So the work that's in something like move to, we don't have to write the code to do that. By wrapping it up in a method, the people who implement the method can change exactly how it's done in the future as well, which gives them flexibility. So it spares us from having to worry about a lot of stuff. We just say, okay, method's job is to move a person this way. We don't care how it's done. We'll just, um, uh, we'll just call it. It will do its task as long as I give it a legitimate x and y value to move to. It will do its task. It simplifies my life. And for the people who create that method, it allows them to, uh, to evolve it in the future. This is uh, very valuable. By dividing it up into methods also, we, um, we can uh, have the people, people work on different methods at different times. So if you're working with a buddy on a model, they can do, she can do one part, you can do the other part. Um, and you know, some, one person can do one method, one set of methods, another person can do another set of methods. And all you have to do is, is know, okay, there will be a method to do this. You don't have to worry about how she's implemented it or anything like that. Would there be a volunteer who could go get Merlin from his office? Yep. Do you know Merlin, the bearded yep. guy? Either yep. that or Seth, the bald guy. Um, either one could come. Um, and if you find a guy who's bald and bearded, you're welcome to bring him as well. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, uh, we, we build up um, methods that are that are general by providing um, uh, by providing parameters to them okay so we have this move to method which takes X and Y now we could provide a method which says you know one method that's moved to screen location one one another screen location one two another screen location one three provide methods for each of those but that's not very um, uh, it's not very useful there'd be tons of methods so instead we want to create general methods methods that that will perform a general sort of task. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, they'll, they'll perform, um, we, we generalize them by providing more parameters, okay? So if you provide extra parameters, they can do their job more generally. So rather than hard coding what they should do, we provide it as part of a parameter, okay? So maybe we have, um, uh, maybe we have a method which um, can be used to, um, you know, connect uh, connect uh, an individual, a person, and a person. And instead, we generalize it by turning into something that connects an agent with an agent. And a person is just one type of agent. And that keeps it more general. We'll come back to that, that point later. Okay. Um, another motivation for putting it at this, we, we lessen the risk of change. If we just call up a method move to, when we go to a new version of any logic, they could have changed how it works, but it doesn't affect our model at all. Our model still works. Okay. Um, these are some, some general sort of points about why we create methods. So if you start seeing in your model repeated code, code where you do the same thing in many places, um, for example, where you have the same code that, that connects two people and then applies a network. Yeah, um, Seth, so I'm, I'm having trouble connecting with this connector. I was able to do it two days ago, but um, when I connect via the normal, um, normal mechanism, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm not able to, uh, so do I have to disconnect this guy? For some reason I thought these both could, um, could be connected. Uh, oh. Yeah, so yes. that's, yeah, totally should be. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see if that does that. Okay, I appreciate it, yeah. Um, so uh, when, we, when we create methods, we often are looking for code that's repeated, and we try to avoid repeating code by putting it into a method. So instead of having that same code repeated five different places, we have five calls to the method. And that allows if we have to debug that code in the future, if we find there's a bug and it doesn't handle this condition or that condition, we just change it one place. Okay? So if you start seeing repeat code, that's a bad sign. It, it's a sign that you need a method. Okay? And we talk about refactoring the program to change it without changing its behavior, just to make it more better structured. Okay? Um, and uh, please, uh, so so all I do is here is that, okay. that one there, yeah. And um, I'm not getting um, great. 
and he uh, it was working this morning in the other room, of course. So oh, please, of course. <laughs> please. Okay. So I'm just gonna um, cool. go go forward. Okay. Um, right. So we may build a function, for example. Oh, please go ahead. That identifies all people who have been smokers for more than ten years. But it'd be much more effective to build a function that identifies all people who have been smokers for more than n years, and you provide n as a parameter, and then you could use it flexibly. You could use it in one case where it's ten years. You could use it in another case where your interest is, is those who have been a smoker for for at least five years, and use it, you know, for those who've been a smoker for more than one year or something. So we, we try to create a, a quite general function. Can you kind of yeah, please. So um, methods are associated with an object, right? Uh, that's right. So, so how about if you have some method? Okay, so it depends on the nature of the code, okay? So so one one need for that would be if you, um, let's suppose you had a method which really doesn't depend on the nature of the object and what you code, you just want it to be a service that's called compute something. Right. Now, if it's a method which doesn't depend on the state of the object, on sort of that object's characteristics, if it's just a general service, like you want to compute the sign of some number, you declare that as a static method, okay? And then you can call it without function. It's a function. It's a function that doesn't depend on any object context, okay? And so you might have a, a utility class which which provides um, which provide um, okay. Uh, sure, I'm just trying to get the uh, sure. You can peel this guy on there. It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so not non connection. I, I, I rebooted the smart board, but it or turned it off. Turned it off. It didn't work. Um, when I was young, we didn't know. Blackboard would be good. Oh, um, <laughs> special yeah. 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 We need more folks like you <laughs> in the computer center. Um, Hang on. So, so is um, there anything? <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so in short, um, we can take it into a, a stat that if it's not something which depends on object state. Um, but another thing, like if, if it does depend something on the state and we want to generalize it, what we can do is we can make um, make all those classes a subclass of another class. Is it okay. EJ1? Um, in, in which case they all inherit that method. Or finally, um, more flexibly, you can use a, uh, a technique known as mixins, which basically provides you a way of kind of, uh, a way of using that functionality within a bunch of different classes, exposing that functionality, offering that service for many classes, but it reuses the same. Um, to find it in a modular way, so it doesn't have to redefine it. So are, are you going to talk about inheritance? Because that would make a lot of sense in the context of models that have a yes. person class. And exactly. Then yes. Today, class. And today we're going to be talking about it. So it, it may be in a later yeah. session yeah. today rather than this session, but we're going to be talking you, about it. Are you going to show us how to use it in um, the logic? Um, I'm utilizing it, and then, and then I'll talk some about using it explicitly. Okay. Um, yeah, if we can prove it's coming. Okay, so um, so uh, you know similarly, if we want to uh, calculate the count the number of people who are male, you know, it'd be better to create a method which counts the number of people who are of a certain specified sex, and we can pass to say, okay, count the uh, number of people who are specified who are who have this sex, male, and then count the number. Then we can reuse oh. it for, for the other one. Okay. Um, now you're rebooting the smart board. No. Oh, okay, the computer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that input actually, right. and it does. So we've taken it down to it's your laptop doing something strange. Okay, okay. Um, that, that, that's a, bet, a very good sign. Um, but it's not going any further. And it's VGA1? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, right. Um, okay, hey. Oh. Hey, uh, very, very good. Now, now, why it didn't do it for that those other settings? Um, uh, that one, I just put the output on only CRT, not shared. Right. Let me just try. Now it works with this one too. Now it works with both. So, I wonder if there's a bent pin or something. That's worth well, checking. I, I checked the cable. Okay. It didn't look like it. Okay. Okay. Thanks a bunch to both of you. Thanks uh, so much. I We're really do really appreciate that. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Right. So um, let, let's talk about. So when we say we abstract, we we'd like to capture generality within computer science. We don't like to see repeats of things. 
when we have a class that provides similar functionality to another class, we want to abstract it so that we have a more general notion that we can reuse in many cases. And there's two ways of doing this. We're going to be talking right now about functional abstraction, okay? So we use functions to provide some functionality while hiding the implementation details. This is what we're doing this session. We're going to be talking later today about class-based abstraction. Here we create classes to capture functionality. And, um, and this, this captures both functionality and sort of uh, the data that they store. Okay, um, so, uh, so here we, we define a method. We define a or function which performs a task. A method is just a function that does its job on a particular object. It always needs a particular object to be operating on it. And that object's location within that method, the object that on which it operates is referred to using a special word. It's a special word that refers to this object, to me, within a method. And what is that word? Anyone want to guess? It's not indexed, so that that's provided in a different context in, in any logic. But there's a word, and I've, referred, I've used it about probably 50 times so far, this. That refers, so it's almost as if a method is a function where we pass it, its first parameter is always known as this. So you always pass it implicitly, something that says you're operating on this, this object. And then it can use this to refer to, to me, okay? Um, so a method, what might a method do? My computer value, hiding the algorithm to do that, test some condition, like is male or is infected, or has cervical cancer, or you know, has, um, uh, has diabetes, and hide the details of how that's created. Now why might that be useful? Because this might depend right now on a state chart. And right now it's just one state in a state chart. You just say, you know, is it in the cervical cancer state? But maybe in the future that will go to five different states, ten different states. You don't want the rest of your model to have to worry about those changes in the state chart. So you want, the rest of the model can just ask, does this person have cervical cancer? Which is the, the real question you care about. And, and if you modify that state chart, all's well and good. You just modify that one method. You don't have to go search everywhere to find where it might depend on the state charts. In short, you, reduce, you increase the robustness by not depending on how a person is implemented elsewhere in the model. Instead, all you do is you, you care about asking questions like, is this per, does this person have, have cervical cancer? And, and that method will be the only place you have to worry about how is the state chart encoded, you know, about whether they have cervical cancer or not. This allows you to evolve the person's state chart very flexibly just have to change one or two things and it, it all works out. Um, meanwhile, if you had scattered throughout your whole model something that says, are they in this state or are they in that state or in this other place, then whenever you change that state chart, it might break things throughout your model and you might have to go on a, on a search for them. Even worse, you might miss some. Okay, what's another, what job might another method do? It might perform an update on a person. For example, infect them. Simulate a change of state resulting from a, a complex procedure, transmit infection to another. It might also uh, connect them to a, a, a different person or change their location. Finally, it might return a representation, um, for example, a string um, uh, that 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 gives information about their name or their history or what have you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so depending on the what, what this class provides, like it guarantees that. I will answer, if, if you ask me, I will tell you whether you have cervical cancer. That allows the rest of the model to just depend on what we call the interface. The implementation can evolve. How that method is defined, the details of its body can evolve in the future. Whether it depends on, looks at this state, or keep track of an internal variable that says, do you have cervical cancer? That's, that's up to it. All you ask is, there's a contract, there's a service provided by your, by your class that says, do I have cervical cancer or not? It can change how it's implemented in the future. But this is what we call separation of interface from implementation. So in any logic, help documentation, when you see what each object provides, it doesn't say how it's implemented. That's up to them. And that allows them in the future to make it more efficient, for example, to change how it's done. All you know is, you, you, all you care about is, when I give it this information, it will do, it, it will do its job in this way. This is what it will do. 
and they can evolve it all they want. So the separation of interface, what's promised, the promises, the contract from how it's done is key. And I would note that it's key in the human world too. When you ship a package via FedEx, you don't want to know everything about, you know, who's the person driving the truck from the office you go to to the Saskatoon airport, on exactly what flight is it located, how many times will refueling occur before. You don't care about that. That's their job. What you care about is that they promise if you deliver it by 5 p.m. one day, they'll get it to the destination by 10 a.m., you know, two days from now or whatever. That's what you care, the what, the, the, the how is left to them. And so it is here. We provide guarantees for our, our methods. We say our job is to do this and we can change the implementation later. The things that use the method, the clients, just like you're a client of FedEx, the things that call has cervical cancer, um, uh, they don't have to worry about the details of, of how, okay? And we'll typically provide some comments about how, about what a method guarantees, like what it does. We'll provide it in comments, okay? Um, so there's a bunch of good benefits from this. Um, okay, so uh, so why, why do this easier modifiability, transparency? If you call on a person, let's suppose you have, uh, remember, we could use statistics to count the number of people with different characteristics. So one of those statistics might be count those with cervical cancer for an HPV model, let's say. And within that model, um, within the statistics, remember that you have to say item dot, and it's some test, like item dot age is less than 18 or whatever. Um, here, what it would do is item dot has cervical cancer. It would be the condition that's counted up. Um, and uh, that's clearer than testing a very complex condition. So like, is it in this state or that state or that state? When you see this complex condition there, you have to reason through what is it really trying to determine? What's the meaning of that? What is it trying to do at a high level? Here, it's obvious from the name, like has cervical cancer. Okay, what it's trying to do is determine if the person has cervical cancer or not. That's the convention in, in Java to say, has X, it's, it's something that returns true or false based on, on whether that's, uh, that's true or false, or is something or whatever, okay? Um, and then it's easier uh, to later reuse, it. reduce complexity, uh, reduces the risk of program error. You're not depending on the how. So here's some functional abstraction in Java. So this is, this is a model called TB risk factors, um, which has TB, diabetes, and, and tobacco use. This is just sort of a toy model to prototype something. And here we have a bunch of, of, of methods. And I actually violated the, the rules of, of Java in terms of capitalizing. This should be is with a lowercase i, current smoker, um, or count contacts with a lowercase c, or get degree with a lowercase um, g, et cetera. But um, these are methods, and they do useful things. For example, one will count the number of contacts, one will count the number of smoking contacts. Another will say, is this person a current smoker? Now, Again, somebody externally can call these methods. Another, so this, these are provided by person as part of the contract to person. That given some information, in this case, you don't have to provide anything. You just call it on an object. Really, all it needs to know is this. You no, know, return something that says, are they a current smoker? Again, another object could use that method then, or another part of the model, say a statistic, could use that to determine if they're a smoker. That might secretly check if they're in exactly this state. But later, maybe there's a you know current smoker, um, current pipe smoker, current cigarette smoker, and if we change it in that way, all we do is we change this method. Nothing else externally depends on this state chart. It all goes through here. So, so we have reduced vulnerability. This is part of the interface of project of a person. To say. It's the part of the contract of this. This is conceptual level. I'm going to introduce you to how you do these things in just a minute. But this is a lot of the motivation we do that. And you'll find in my, in my model lots of these things because they make my job simpler. I don't have to worry, I don't want to worry about the details of this. I don't care what the state is named. I don't, I don't particularly want to know how many states are there. I can't remember that. So instead, all I just want to know is I want to be able to call something that tells me if there's a smoker. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, that is current could do that. Or, um, or are but you saying like as soon as the yeah. person becomes a smoker, like yeah. a variable changes? You, you could do it with a variable, but it's less 
less, it's, it's more fragile because um, a variable is just one way to do it. Like maybe in the future you want to have um, one state chart for cigarette smoking, one state chart for pipe smoking, another state chart for cigar smoking or something like that. And, um, and you know, it's, it's going to be true if any of them uh, are true. And you, in the future, might not just want one variable for is smoking. You could have it. That's one option. But this gives more flexibility. If you have this, you could have a variable and just return the value of the variable. That's perfectly good. This gives you more flexibility because what, however the internal state evolves, this will still work. You just, you just update this method and it will still accommodate that. Um, maybe in the future you want a system dynamics model associated with you know, someone's health state, including the number of cigarettes that they're currently smoking or something like that. And, and you don't have to worry about the, you always have to have just one variable with a certain name you know, for this. You have more flexibility with the, with the method. It can do lots of stuff besides return a variable. Uh, another example is, like sometimes you don't want one variable for something. You can have it, but it's kind of forced. Like maybe instead you have is, you, uh, secretly in the implementation of person, maybe you have is cigar smoker, is cigarette smoker, is pipe smoker. And, and um, those are the variables you want later instead of a variable called is current smoker. So as I say, this is more flexible. This will let you evolve it in more different ways to do it as a method. If you did add that variable yeah. to the uh, state chart, yeah. would that variable be attributes of that particular object thing? Y yeah, you could add a variable. I think what Diana was asking, you could add a variable, true or false variable, Boolean in other words, called is, is current smoker. And that the variable could be named that. And you could, you could assign to that when you reach one point. When you reach another point, it could assign to it. You know, because then all the functions couldn't check into the status of that. Correct. Correct. Y y that's, that's perfectly allowed by this, but this doesn't require that. In other words, it's more flexible. Assigning to that variable is a little bit more fragile because sometimes you may forget to assign to it when you go into certain states. And if you don't have to maintain it, you could just, this function could just ask, are you in this state or are you in that state? It's, it, it might be a bit faster to do it as a variable, which would be an option, but you don't necessarily want to do it. So I have a small ABM model with birth deaths, which if any of you have a um, have a uh, you know, laptop, you're welcome to load here. I want to walk through some examples. So here's the perform birth um, perform birth uh, function. Um, so these are called functions in any logic, and and you could drag them in from the palette. It's a, it's a function. Okay, this is a method. It's a method, except it, it can be static, so it can be a method for an object. In other words, operate on that object, or it could be what's what we call a static method. Personally, I don't like that. It's really a function. It's a function associated with this class, with person. It's a service offered by the class, not by the particular person. In this case, this is a service offered by a particular instance of person, to wit, a woman, uh, a mother, uh, to be mother, and she can perform birth. Okay. So this is the perform birth function. Again, by Java conventions, it should be lowercase p. Now this asks, um, OK, is it static or not? In other words, it is a function of an instance or of a class. It also lets you dictate um, what is the thing that it, does it return any information? Does it return an integer? Like maybe, maybe to report the number of babies that were born, twin or, or not twin. Um, um, so, um, uh, or does it uh, return a string, the name of the baby that's born? Or does it return a Boolean, whether the birth was uh, a stillbirth or, or live birth? Does it, you know, does it return any thoughts or does it return nothing? See this void? That means it returns nothing. Okay. So when you say uh, this is a void method, it means there's no information returned from it. Why would a method return, what, what would a method do if it, if, it, if it returns nothing, if it's just a void method, why would you have a void method? You don't need to assign that value of the return to anything. Either what yeah. work gets done That's is done on the state and is done in the function is done in the function. Exactly. Exactly. It, so again, big picture methods or functions do one of two things or both. They either return information, perform a calculation and return information. Um, or they, or they make some change. 
they'll, they'll change the, the current state of the system. They'll do one of those two things, um, or both. Um, and uh, so some functions, all their job in life is to, to change something, to do something. They perform it, have an action. They're called commands. I mean, just informally, they're called commands. Whereas things that compute a value, those are called more queries. They, they, they may perform a very sophisticated calculation, maybe walking over the population and computing you know, the standard deviation of the, uh, the degree of, of each person in the population and the network, and, and then returning that value. But that's, that's, that's a, called a, a query. They don't change the state. So you can call them many times, and there's no change. That's very good to know about. Whereas some things, they do, they do modify state call them more commands. So here's perform both. Now, oh, I should say, sorry, I'm mean, getting ahead of myself. So this is this is a void method. It doesn't return anything. And then you notice it says, so for this function, it says function arguments. Now, this is another one of these words that in computer science means a very particular thing, which is um, different than what it means in the external world. Um, so when we speak about an argument in the external world, it, it has um, unpleasant connotations. Um, here, function arguments just means the things that it, it, it takes, it requires to do its job. Or the formal parameters is another way to say it. Unfortunately, we're with other connotations elsewhere. The formal parameters. It's the, like the x and y and the move to operator or, or, or method. It's the information it needs to get its job done. So if you give it that information and observe any conditions it wants on that, like maybe x and y have to be both greater than zero. That, that might be some of the conditions it lays down, then it will do its job. And what has to be specified here? What has to be specified is the name. That's the name that it will use internally to refer to it. The people who call it don't need to know that name, but that's, that's in this code. It, when it uses that, it will refer to that. And then secondly, it needs to know the type of each thing provided. Um, so here it doesn't require any information to do its job. It, you can just say to, to uh, any any woman here perform birth and and um, it will will uh, it will happen, um, which is unfortunately well for better or for worse it's not the way it happens in the world. Um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so um, indeed um, okay so we that was in the general tab now we go to the the code tab and what we see here is. Um, there's this function body, and you have, um, this is the code. This is the code here. I'm, some of us saw this code um, um, one or two lectures ago, one or two um, things ago. But what is this thing here? It says person mother equals this. First of all, what is this? It's uh, the, yeah, the object on which this was called. So we said, like, like person, maybe there's a person P, and we say P dot perform birth. Okay? Um, and so this is, is now P. It's, it's the thing on which it was called. It's, it's me. It's, it's, in this case, it's the woman. And we say mother equals this, OK? That's just giving another name to this. It's, it, this is a, a reference to some particular person. And we're, we're letting us denote that reference and refer to it by, by the word mother, just to be clear about the relationship. Now, what is this one doing? So this is offspring, get me.
two things. We call establishing offspring connections based on mother's connections, and we give it two, two arguments, offspring and mother. And that will perform its job. And I don't have to worry here about how that's done. All I know is that if I call this, it will establish the connections for the for the baby based on the mother's connections. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. But the so the, the backslash backslash that is that just that's not so okay. code. Comment. That's just it's a comment, comment that you're putting in there to say this is what this next. Piece it just is reminds right. myself of kind of okay. what I'm doing here. Right. Now, fortunately, because of this name, I know it's quite a mouthful, but it's. It's, uh, I if you read it, it's pretty clear what it does. I mean, there's not a lot of guesswork as to what that method does. Now, how it does it, you might re reasonably wonder, but that's, that's not for you to terribly worry about. As long as it does its job, you're fine. Just like shipping that, U that UPS or FedEx package, um, thank goodness you don't have to worry about all the details. That's their job. You have a contract with them, they do their job. This is a contract with you. You give it a legitimate offspring and mother, and it does its job. Okay. Here's here's another one. Establish offspring location based on mother's location. Notice I broke those into two pieces because maybe later I wanna I, I wanna do something different. Um, really, this shouldn't say mother. It could be anyone that pass. So it should be like establish offspring or establish connections based on you know others' connections. Maybe later I wanna do it for the father. And so it doesn't. It really doesn't have to be mother's connections. So that's actually a poor name. So, so those are methods, and, and so often one method will call other methods. And it, so this is just very common. You have one method, and it it does its job, and uh, it calls other things, which it just counts on working. And maybe these are things that are built into any logic, but maybe there are things you're going to write later, but or maybe there are things someone else is going to write. Um, but you don't really worry about that while you're doing this. There's that you're just thinking about what has to be done at this point. And you're counting that they will do their job. Okay. Can I ask one quick sure. Like sure. Line, so a get name add population and then yep. the string of information add or the set of information add. Yeah. So double zero oh. where I'm, I'm assuming is referring to the age. How do we figure that out? Okay. Like there's the zero and then there's ethnicity and then there's sex. Right. So I'm assuming you're assigning um, an age of zero, the mother's ethnicity. Right. Yep, yep. But how do you, how would you know that? It's a good okay, okay. That's a great question. So let's let's go take a look at it. And that's that's I would say a, a key um, a key question. So here's ABM model with birth death. So let's let's go call this uh, call this up. So here we have person and this is a little bit of a more uh, evolved version of this, but let's go down to perform birth and um, and uh, here we have add population. So Oh, you notice I just replaced it with 0.0, .0 um, at this point. But if I do control space here, this is, you'll notice it actually creates documentation for it. This is what's called Java doc, okay? And, and you can get it to produce documentation for your own code, too. Um, and is that because of the order of the parameters and the population? So if we get two yeah. parameters, yeah. Yeah. Or uh, uh, under person. Uh, sorry, under person. For under person. So a person, these are exactly the, like this, this sex thing, where did that come from? Oh, that's that. And ethnicity, though, that's that. And um, mother, oh, oh, that's that one. So we're just providing it with all the parameters it needs. Now, as far as the order, it yeah. tells us what order. And you can see it's a double initial age, okay. ethnicity. So it, it, it clues you in for that. Yes. that, that again, control space is your parameter. Right. Yeah. Um, if hey, not, the spouse. Um, hey, do you remember in class the other yeah. day when we put the this dot get name? I mean, it didn't work in any logic, and then we had to get rid of the this dot and work. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that's why. Uh, so I, I haven't verified it, but I think Dylan's uh, conjecture is right. Um, you were in the graph. You were in the graph class there, and there's not always a there's not always a this associated with anything around the graph. I think I think that this referred to the graph at that yeah. point. Yeah. Um, because when you went control space after, it didn't give you anything. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, like it just didn't, it, it just, I forget, it, there was a word in there, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a list that should have been. There should have been there. <laughs> so that, that, that 
know, it's probably correct. I haven't gone to verify that, but that's the first time I've encountered something like that, and I don't, I, I think that's a little bit of a, of an odd thing. The good thing is, you can tell you, okay, you, you can't do this. You have to, I think basically the graph is an object, and because it's an object, it is its own this, and um, it's, 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 it's a graph class, and this refers to the, the current graph, and it has a main associated with it, so you can uh, call it get main, but, okay. but it, it's, 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 it's not, um, oh, so um, I don't want to call them more. Um, I, I, th there are several <laughs> things that, so I have certain things that conflict with that hypothesis that I need to resolve, okay? But I will find out what the answer is to that. Um, uh, I, I, I am, I, I, I'm not worried about it, just I'm curious. Um, okay. So, so here we have uh, implementation of a method. So for, for all people who use perform BERT, that's just a service that will be provided. They don't have to worry about this. But you'll notice that even the implementation of this uses other methods in the same way. We don't have to worry about how those are implemented. We just use them, right? Okay. Um, so what's going on here? Well, um, right. So what's called a function, and you'll have to call it method, not just going to programming. And, um, and here we're, we're calling off two methods. Okay, so what are methods? Methods are functions you call in an object, or you can call in an object, okay? They need to be called in an object. Um, they can do either or both compute values before an action. And they consist of two pieces, a header that says what it needs to do its job, what its name is, and that sort of thing, and then a body that actually tells the how, how it accomplishes its job. The people who use it only need to know this, okay? Um, it's kind of like, what you see on the FedEx website, you need to, to ship your package, you don't need to know how. Okay, so what do method bodies consist of? Well, we talked about it last time a little bit, variables, iterations, and statements. Statements are commands that do something. So they change the value of the variable. They, they modify something. Um, it may return a value that's computed from the function um, and uh, perform a one or another set of statements. Okay. So what's the thing it needs to do with Java? The thing's called parameters or arguments. This is general sort of Java knowledge. Um, so when I say parameter here, I mean in, in, a, in a computer science or Java sense. It's passed to the method um, by whoever uses it to tell it the, the specifics of the context that it wants to compute. So maybe we have a method that's count people below age, and we pass it the age that below which we want to count the number of people. So there'd be a parameter for for that age, right? Um, or move to I mean, the x and y you provide it so it can do its job, okay? These parameters are only available inside the method. Once the method exits, these parameters are no longer available, okay? Um, what, what I mean by that is, is um, they're not, their names, you can't, can't use them. So you call move to on x and y inside, maybe it refers to x and y, and then when it, it's left, those x and y don't have that meaning anymore. Um, Okay, so just just because we have a parameter in a method named A doesn't change the value of any A outside the method. Uh, it's a different A, so to speak. Um, a. Um, okay, so in most non-static methods, this is passed implicitly. Well, in, in most, i.e. non-static. Static methods don't have a this because it's on the whole class. But other methods, this is passed to refer the method to what object we've invoked it on. Okay, um, okay so Dylan asked me, yesterday you said, oh, maybe it's a pass-by value thing. Okay, um, so if, if in a method we change the value of a parameter, um, it doesn't change the value outside of the method. The thing we, information we passed in is a value for x, a value for y. So if we had a method like this, it takes a value in, and we just assign this to it, knowing that you could call it with, you know, with a value b, it actually passes the value itself. It doesn't pass somehow a reference to B. So, so you can pass this in to, and it won't change anything outside of it. All it will be changing is, is inside it changes the value of A. So anything later here that uses A within this method would see this value, but n it doesn't modify anything outside. So in short, it's not doing weird things, um, you know, out to your things outside. Um, okay, so here's perform birth. Here we have it return a, a value, the no value, and it doesn't take any arguments, okay? Um, 
Here's established offspring connection based on mother's connection. Badly named, it's more general than that. It's establish um, one person's connections or add one person's connections to another. It's really what it is. But here I call it offspring and mother. Um, you know, would you like, return a string in there if you wanted it to give us the message from the mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you might return a Boolean value, true or false, that says whether it was successful or not. Um, or you might return an int, how many, how many connections were added. That would be part of its contract. Just like FedEx might say, if you ship your package with us, we'll give you a delivery tracking receipt or you know, whatever. That would be part of the contract. It gives you back this information. Okay, um, okay so um, here this information passed in. This is... Um, Right, so uh, so consider how one method calls another. Here, okay, this is this is going to come closer to making yourself to getting beyond the, the casual familiarity with Java. Okay, so we're going to talk about things that not many people outside of computer science talk about. Um, maybe I should stand by the door. Um, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about things that my kind talk about. Um, <laughs> render us <laughs> into the current state. Um, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so, uh, so suppose we have one method calling another. Are you sure you both want to be here? Okay, no, actually, this is going to be really useful, I think. I think this is going to be really useful. This is going to take you beyond the level of Java for dummies, okay? Um, that's sort of that book that, that you can get. This is taking you to a level that that really normally requires uh, some serious computer science exposure. Okay, so let's suppose we are considering how performed birth calls establish offspring connections based on mother's connections. There's some code before and some code after, right? So we do a couple things, we call this, and then we do a couple things. All right? Okay. Um, so let's, let's continue on. So let's think about this. Performed birth calls this, it does some work, and then maybe it returns a value, or maybe it finishes and it goes back to perform birth, right? So, so in other words, there's kind of a, a go here, we call up to this, this kind of runs for a while, and then we come back here and continue on, right? Um, it's kind of like we request one service, then we, when that's finished, we request another service, and it's finished, and we're done. Okay, um, so, so it resumes, right? Okay. So what's going on here? What if this guy calls somebody else? What if that guy calls somebody else? What if that guy calls somebody else? You're going to have this kind of hierarchy of, of sort of calls, and then maybe eventually it comes back. It goes back there. Um, we're going to talk about that. And there's now something called a call stack. Okay? Um, so, what is this? So, this is another term used by computer scientists. I'm, I'm sorry. Using it. Throwing a lot of these out here. Arguments, parameters, stack. Okay. Um, so, so we think of a stack in, in the real world, you know, a stack of things that are piled to top each other, right? Um, and uh, here we could think of a, of a stack as well. Um, perpendicular to the gradient. Um, you speak about a stack uh, as well as things that are piled atop each other. And what are these things? These are successive calls, okay? Um, and uh, we need to, when we call one, one method calls another, it needs to keep track of where we were, right? Right? Um, uh, when we resume execution after the routine. So what were the values of the things that were going on there? Where in the program was it? So that when we get back, from from here, from from this place over here, we know where we were, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we keep track of that in something called the it, it accumulates the information on each successive context where we were at, so that we can resume it later. Okay. Okay. So more than that, variables like like this this. Um, mother here and offspring there, they live on this stack. So, so they're created, they exist while we're in this code, and then when we return from this code, they disappear. 
any method, any parameters passed to us, like that x and y while move to is going on, those x and y are active, but after move to is gone, they disappear. They're popped from the stack. They, we take them off the stack, okay? Um, the call stack is the function that remembers this context. Variables live on there and they disappear after we're gone. And we're called an act so one of these things that's placed on the stack is called an activation record. So perform birth is under it, and then there's this, and then there'll be something it calls, and that's on top of that, and that's on top of that, and that's on top of that. And successively down, there are these kind of variables that are used by each of them. And the things up here, by and large, just don't modify any of the variables down here. They don't modify. So if move to calls, I don't know, um, secret, um, secret, you know, it calls check speed or something like that, or check velocity or, or something. Um, the X and Y don't get modified by that check velocity. They live lower lower in the stack. Um, even if it uses something called X and Y, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't overwrite them, okay? Now the important thing, why am I telling you this? I'm, I'm trying to just clue you into things that are useful in any logic, okay? As well as things to build good, good models. Um, models that won't make me wince. And um, like the, that, that model we saw yesterday. So you will sometimes encounter the call stack in error messages. And you'll encounter it in a debugger. Okay? And, and it's less disconcerting to be able to know what that is. And no, it's nothing to be, in fact, it's your friend. It's your friend, okay? Um, okay, so here's the code for perform birth, prior to methical, after the methical. Remember, it resumes. It comes here, pop, pushes something on the call stack, call stack grows, and who knows what it does up here, and then it goes back and it pops it on. Okay, okay, wow. Um, okay, now here's the code for this. Here's the code for establish offspring connection based on mother's connection. Checks if there's no mother's connections, then we don't do anything. Otherwise, we go through each of the mother's connections and add them into the offspring. Okay, um, and then we call offspring dot right? Here we're also calling offspring dot connective. So, so here perform birth called this guy, this guy called that guy, and there's a stack being built up that is sort of those those three things on it. So perform birth called this, and this thing called connect to, right? So perform birth called this, this thing called connect to. And so you have sort of this, this call here. So what's happened actually is there's a call stack built up, okay? So here's the, here's the, the lower part is the activation record, so-called activation record for, I can't believe you folks are hearing this. This is, this is like the secret knowledge of computer scientists. I'm letting out. I feel like a Freemason that's, you know, like <laughs> violating um, my things. This is what, this is what allows computer science to zero in on errors, because they can look at the call stack and they know, oh, it's from something down here. That's the problem. Or, oh, it occurred up here. So that's why I should look. Okay, so um, so here, this is the activation record for perform birth, okay? Um, and here's the activation record for established offspring connection based on mother's connections. And here's the activation record for call, uh, call connective. Why is it putting these things on the stack? Why is it stacking them up? Why This looks like a bizarre structure. Well, it's not so bizarre when you remember that in order to resume here, it has to know where to resume. It has to know where, it, from whence it came. Just as those agents yesterday that you had bouncing back and forth to the store, they have to remember from whence they came, right? Um, so it is here. It has, to, it has to store some information here. But not only that, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually storing sort of what offspring refers to and mother refers to and, and this refers to. Now, let me, let me be clear about this. Perform birth. Perform birth. Um, where is it? Here it is. Here's perform birth. There's something called mother here, right? When I called establish offspring connections based on whoop, establish offspring connections based on mother's connections, um, there's there's actually a variable, one of the parameters called mother. Okay? But it's a different, it's a different one. Here we have this this mother in terms of inside perform birth. We can call established offspring connection. This guy shouldn't care about whether we happen to call it mother up here. Or shouldn't care. Maybe we call it ma. Maybe we call it mom. Or maybe we call it mum. Or maybe we call it um, muchi. You know, we shouldn't care what this is called. Um, and and by that token, this thing shouldn't interfere in any way with this one. This one and nothing we do with this should kind of change this. And so it is. Um, 
That wasn't always true. In early days, computer science, you get weird futzing around, but, but now that's true. So this guy calls this guy. We can name these things whatever we want. As it turns out, we name them offspring and mother, which happen to be the same names here, but we don't have to. There's no real worries about that. We can call these whatever we want, and then this guy could call that. And I don't know what this guy calls it. Maybe it calls R0, maybe it calls person B. Maybe in the future, they'll change it to, say, mother. I don't know, um, but, but we shouldn't have to care about it, whatever it calls this, okay? So this is call stack built up. And ladies and gentlemen, this call stack and your running models is probably 20 things deep, okay? Any logic you can call this, call this, call this, call this, and only some of those things you know about what are going on. Now, so the, the, mm. the reason the mother doesn't matter, matter in the blue and the red is because of these local variables? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. That's right. Um, so, um, and therefore they're put on, on the stack, or the parameters. Here are the parameters, um, and, and so they're put on the stack. Okay. So here, this refers to something, and and I'm calling um, a perform birth in somebody, and then it, it's actually referring, and I call establish offspring connection based on mother's connection, and this refers to something, and this refers to something here. But those this is don't in no way um, uh, interfere with, so they don't even know about each other. Like this one, doesn't care about that offspring. It doesn't doesn't know. He doesn't care what he names these things. Just like I don't care um, how FedEx refers. You know, FedEx internally could refer to me as weird professor or something like that. Um, I don't really care. Um, as long as they get their job done, that's their business. Um, you know, geek, geek, geeky glasses guy or something like that. They could call me whatever they want. Just get get my job done. And so it is with perform birth. It doesn't care what these guys call it. Um, that's up to them, um, as long as they get the job done. Okay. Um, so, so folks, if we had, um, uh, right? Okay. Well, we emphasized this before. So, um, okay. So uh, there's a call stack. Every time we make a call to a method, the new parameters get p placed on the stack. And um, and uh, so suppose we had this dot foo of one, two, and suppose we had, this is how foo is defined here, um, and uh, and suppose, so we pass it an A and a B, this is implicitly you know, the thing it's called on. So then we have this dot bar, so foo calls this dot bar of A plus B times two, B minus A, okay? So A plus B times two is, is one plus two, which is three times two, which is six, and B minus A is one. Um, so, so this guy here, this is a call to foo. It creates this activation record. These things are placed on on that on the stack. So they're placing this activation record one and two, the values of these two. And this is a reference to some object. And then it calls bar with A being with with perhaps bar calls this first parameter A. Perhaps it calls it B. This guy doesn't have to worry about that. Or A and C. This guy doesn't have to worry about whatever it calls it. The A up here can be, it will be the, fir the first parameter will be si six and the second will be six. Oh, will be one. Okay. Um, so, okay, so that was the most complex stuff. And again, I can't believe you're seeing this. Um, this, this is normally talked about only in computer science courses. And, and pretty, I don't think this is talked about in first year. I think it's second or third year. Type of thing. I think it's probably second year. Um, just to, um, but you're going to see it. Where are you going to see this thing? Where are you going to see this call stack? Let's let's go see it. Let's go see it. Um, so I'm going to introduce a problem. Okay, I'm going to introduce a problem and establish offspring connections based on mother's connections. I'm going to introduce a bug. Okay, I'm going to avoid checking if the mother's connections, if the mother has no connection. Okay, let's let's run this. Let's run this thing. Um, so I'm going to introduce a bug. This bug was there originally. Um, boom. Okay, so so run it. Let's go. Let's go see what happens. Boom. Um, okay. Hey, nothing. No, nothing yet. Um, oh, look at that. Null pointer exception. Remember exceptions from yesterday? Or is it, it's an exceptional condition. Okay. Please please see console. Okay. So so where did this occur? Where where where, where was this problem? Um, oh, what's this thing? Oh my gosh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what? What stands this thing? What, what is this thing that stands before me? This is the 
cause that. Now, I, again, I don't need some of these things you'll recognize. Like, what's engine dollar sign A? Engine A. I, I don't know what those are. What, what is transition timeout? Well, okay, so there was a timeout transition that apparently fired, and that led someone to execute you know, some sort of execute person. I and mean, I can click and I can, I can see where it is. And then that call performed burr. Okay, so, so something with this transition timeout led to led to some execution of action that called perform birth. It's probably a timeout associated with pregnancy. It's probably nine months. Pregnancy. Let's let's go see if that, that suspicion is worn is is borne out. Um, so here we are. So if they're in a pregnant state, there is a there is a timeout of 0.75 years after which they perform birth. Okay? So so let's let's again go to console and so we have performed birth, and performed birth is called established offspring connection based on mother's connection. And that's where there was a null pointer exception. So it occurred here. This is the guy we have to go look at. This is where it occurred. Useful? Um, I think so. Um, what, what you'll find, though, is when we discuss the debugging chapter, that if, if you're not scared by this anymore, you can you can actually use this to your real advantage. You can go into this place, see what the values of the variables are at that place, and go step through it, and have it actually do things step at a time, and see where it starts having problems. You can stop it before then. So once you're able to kind of read this without getting too scared, you could use it to your advantage. So within any logic, you can do that stepping through and checking the variables? You attach with a, so yes, with the professional version, you attach with the Eclipse debugger. Um, uh, without that, and I'll show you how to do that. So you can step, set very. Otherwise, if you, you didn't have that, you could just add it to kind of front statement. And see absolutely, that. absolutely. But uh, I mean, uh, so generally speaking, I'll do mostly print-based debugging because I find it lets me get into most errors quickly. Yeah. But it, if if I start thinking it's a more complicated thing, I can attach the Eclipse debugger and it's very quick, you know. And you just attach to it and you can set breakpoints and stuff like that. And, and capture things. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Things are the requisite things. Um, I'll be honest. I mean, um, some of these things I understand, some I don't. Yeah. I've had to kind of. Um, uh, sorry, but okay. yeah. There's a null pointer exception, so something that should have a pointer in the established well, connection. Yeah. So this is a sign that very likely there. So there was a reference that was. That was that should have that the code expected to have a value, but ended up um, not having a value, and so I'd go and look at this and I'd say, hmm. So this is actually exactly what happened the first time know this if occurred. It's a or B, um, oh, you mean like one of these? Yeah, because I've got two. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, so so it could have been, um, it could have been something. Um, associated with this. It could have been something like offspring is null, something like that. Well, there's, there's two ways. First of all, you could you could uh, print to see, okay, which one is null. Um, the second thing you could, and so print it out and, and, and see if one of them is null. Um, so you, you'd put a, a, well, here, why don't we do it? Um, so uh, trace LN, Let's go see, maybe I have two hypotheses. One is, and this is really what you do when you debug, you have hypotheses. Okay, hypothesis one is mother, mother is somehow null, and therefore, therefore this is dying. And, uh, hypothesis two is that this is dying. So uh, there's a couple ways I could do it. One thing is I could do um, uh, mother, you know, um, and, and do um, something like that, and, uh, and similarly I could do, um, uh, offspring, right? Um, offspring, um, and then I could run that. Um, another thing I could do would, would be to um, stick in a uh, a print statement later on, see how far it's gotten before it happens, which will give me a sense of kind of okay. So so here we go, and but now we've harvested some information, have we not? That will give us a sense of where it is. Okay. So it says null pointer exception. Um, okay, um, so uh, where, so neither of those printed out. Um, oh, th did they? Oh well, but earlier, 
right? Not for that latest birth. I think. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. So, so, um, yeah, okay, so I guess I made a mistake. I, I should have said mother and then, um, uh, yeah, yeah, offspring, sorry. Um, off, offspring, okay. Um, and so actually both of those seem to, um, to have, uh, Seem, seem to have something, but but let's. Uh, I don't know that I fully. Uh, maybe those were from the previous time it was called. So let me see um, here. Um, so I, I'll mark myself as having reached this point. That definitely will print, right? Because my my hypothesis maybe it, it it reached here and it died on another birth that was supposed to have occurred. Um, so I, I'm suspicious. Maybe we didn't see the final birth. Maybe we just saw an earlier the records of an earlier birth. So boom. Okay, so let's go go check this out. Okay, um, okay, here's number one. Okay, yeah, it got through there. So so those are apparently um, legit uh, legit things. Okay, so now let's go see. So both of those are legit. Um, so it's occurring somewhere down here. Okay, um, I've got a hypothesis that what what's going on is mothers dot get connection is null. That would be one hypothesis. But you know maybe it's maybe it's actually reaching somewhere down here. So maybe I'll put in trace ln of two here, right? And maybe I'll put in a trace ln of three here, and then I'll I'll actually explicitly test is it is it uh, this thing? So you know um, this um, and and boom, right? So I'll try that, and then let's try running this thing. Um, boom. Boom. Okay. Um, and boom. Um, okay. So no side effects are needed to have a debug. Um, okay. Um, uh, there we go. Okay. Mother dot get connections null. Okay. The fox has shown its tail, as they would say in China. Um, so so clearly, what's going on from this is that. Um, um, is that this guy is trying to loop, is trying to get a connection and loop over each element of a connection that's null. So I bet I have to insert something like this. That may be what really what happened the first time I did that. And then what do I do? Then I clean this nonsense up. Um, uh, so I, I clean this up. Don't know well, maybe I leave it in there and make sure it fixes it, right? <laughs> I know in this case, I know it fixes it. But, but maybe I leave it in, just make sure uh, things are hunky-dory. Um, Good or not? Good. Okay. Yes. So the call stuff. Um, yeah. There's, there's you know several lines with calls to me. Yeah. I guess my two questions. One is how is it ever so gigantic that you can't even go through it, and is your error always at the top? Normally, your your focus is at the top because that's that's and that's the key thing, folks. That's the deepest place in the call. Uh, let's put it that way. That's where the action's occurring. Um, so, so let me let me emphasize that point because it's absolutely key. Um, so I'm just cleaning. So, so the top of the call stack is the top of the red, the most red yeah. line, right? Correct. Kind of counterintuitive because everything else is running down, and then when you get to that, and you guys start yeah. to block and go up. Yeah. So, so this is where, this is where uh, we think of these things as being piled on top of each other, um, uh, and uh, we, 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 each successive call piles higher and deeper. Um, and uh, and uh, the action is really occurring, like the currently executing one is the one furthest up, furthest up. And so that's where the action is going on. These things are just waiting for these other guys to return. It's kind of like, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like you call somebody on the phone to get a service. They call somebody else to, to, to to get the requisite information, they call yet a third person, and and you're just listening to Muzak. The next person up is listening to Muzak. The next person up is listening to Muzak. Then the next person up is actually the one looking around for the information. And if a problem occurs, like um, if uh, you, you know there's some 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 event that occurs because of of action during that time, it's because of that last person. Someone did, right. Like if they, you had another call, they had to do with that chain of calls that was calling the music. 
Right. Because part of me is thinking that everything is always connected to the model, but where does it end up? Well, yeah, I mean, but uh, so so that's somewhat true in terms of the connectivity, but um, but uh, so this one ran ran fine. Um, so we don't know if the call stack there, but really there's there's an initiator when it comes to any logic. You fired up any logic for the first time, and and well, it's not that that's for me. It's more when you started running the model, it's going off and and. It, it starts some way and it says it's time to run the model and then it calls off to something else that maybe calls up the experiment and it calls off and so there's always there's always a sort of prime mover down there that, so that's listed. So this thing is basically it's, it's going up and down. So for yep. one yep. function it could go up two and then come back down. It could go, go up, up twenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going up and down and up and down and it may go up five hundred sometimes. It may go up a thousand. Not because they're necessarily caught okay. I guess I have another secret. Um, okay, so you don't have to worry about this, folks. But I'll just tell you. Sometimes method delegates to other methods. And, and normally it delegates a part of a subproblem to other methods. Like, in other words, um, uh, so so uh, here what we had going on is that, oops, sorry. Um, what we had going on is that um, that this guy it breaks up different pieces of the subproblem, right? Like, uh, th this whole thing performs a whole bird, which is a big process, I can, and, and I can assure you. And, and then, and then it, it, it calls off things to take parts. Of, it's a divide and conquer strategy. It, it calls off to this thing to establish the connections, this thing to set the location, and then finally it adds um, a reference um, to, to the children connection. So the thing that keeps track of my children, uh, I add the offspring into that. That's kind of divide and conquer. It's just, and, and each of these things is responsible to a final thing. But this is the thing I want to say. That call stack, so A calls B calls C calls D calls E calls, and that can go 20, that can go 50, sometimes maybe it even goes 100 high, although it, that's rare. But what sometimes happens is that A calls itself with a smaller piece of the problem. And and it just divides up the problem and calls itself with it, and it calls itself again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And it keeps on calling itself up, and up, and up, maybe a thousand times. Um, Nick, we call that recursion. Yeah. I want to clarify earlier. Yeah.
and you don't want to impose that it has to have a variable is what it, a, a variable called this and with this semantics because you want the flexibility to adopt it in any number of different ways and maybe the way you want to break it up is is different in the future you know um, maybe you don't want to just keep track of things at this level or that level so so it's not always the case that you want just a variable does that make sense um, so so uh, like like imagine you have a, a variable that uh, an, an object that's the main class and um, you might think, that, okay, there's, there's going to be a variable that's population size, but maybe instead what you want to keep track of is maybe you have one of a separate population of males and females or separate of, of doctors and, and you know, healthcare workers and non-healthcare workers. And instead, so maybe you have a variable associated with each of them, count of healthcare workers, count of doctors, and the count of the population, you don't want to have a separate variable for it. You just want to add those two up. So having a, a function that's like get population size is more general. If you happen to have a variable that's, that's that's population size, great, just return it. But maybe in the future you want to evolve it so that you have a more detailed model with two different populations, in which case you just add those two variables and you return that, that, that quantity. You don't have to, you're not forced to have a variable. All right. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so um, again, these are, these are subtleties well beyond anything you'll get in and most exposures to this, but I'm just trying to give principles that that will let you build bigger models more easily with less grief, that are less buggy, et cetera. Um, okay, um, so methods can compute return of values, perform some action, or both. Um, methods come in two types. Methods associated with objects, these are vastly more common, the most common by far, and then less common are static methods. Static uh, methods associated with classes, okay? Um, and for these, they always take an implicit parameter called this. It's as if move to, when we call p dot move to, move this person to this place. It's as if we are just calling move to, and we pass it this, or you know, p comma x comma y. It's like we're passing, or p is what it ends up calling this. First one, it gives it me this. Okay, um, that's really what's going on. It's passed as the first parameter. Mm. Um, parameters and state explicit, but it's always passed. Okay, even if it appears to take no arguments, even if our method is you know get connections number, secretly there's a thing called this. It's passed to it, so it can ask, what's hey, what's what are my connections it, inside of that get connections number? It can make this, and it can go through iterate through each of its connections. Okay, P dot. Um, p dot get connected agent dot get name inside of this this will refer to whatever this whatever this value is the, the, the reference that came out of this is the this inside of here he's the object on which this is being called so inside of this this is referring to whatever this whole thing refers to with some object off there um, mm, um, here inside of this inside method this refers to whatever P refers to. Um, okay. Um, static methods. Static methods are associated with a class, not a particular object. They'll look like this. Person.nextID. Hmm? There's actually one of these in this uh, this um, th this one here. Um, Person.nextID to, to label to label um, these things. See this next um, get person name Here's a, here's a variable here, and that's actually used. And then there's um, uh, get an increment next ID for person. But there's also a, a, a get ID um, type, of, uh, type of thing here, OK? Um, or, or next ID. So these are, these are things associated with a class. They're not associated with a particular person. Um, it's maybe the class that keeps track of the IDs that are being doled out, sort of like the HSNs and the so, so these, or social security numbers. That are being built up. So this is kind of like, these are much closer to our classic notions of a function, like sine of x, square root of x. To call sine, you don't have to call it on a person. It's not like each person has their personal sign. Well, I guess we're a horoscope sign. <laughs> Wait, what, what's your sign? Um, uh, so square, square root. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> That's right. Um, um, uh, lines two pi. Um, <laughs> well, that's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, square root. You, we don't, you know, like, you don't force.
forced it to ask it on a, on a person, um, square root of, or square. It's, it's just something you compute without that knowledge. And so you can compute, you can associate this with a class. It has to be associated with either a class of Java or an object. Here we can associate with a class, um, like a utilities class or a math class for computers. And then we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't call A or you know, P dot sign instead it would be math class dot sign or whatever. Um, anyway, this is getting pretty technical. Okay, how do we know if a method needs to be static? Well, does it need to depend on the value of some object? Like, this isn't always obvious. Like, get main, it needs to have reference to the agent because the agents actually, um, mm -hmm. agents keep track of their associated main. But it's not immediately obvious that it has to be done, the agent. After all, there's only one um, uh, main. Um, another question, uh, given the same values of the arguments, is the value of the function in other words, what it does, or the value or purpose or, or uh, value of the function, uh, value or um, job performed by the function, value of or job performed by the function, um, identical in any context. Um, would the value, uh, uh, is, uh, is the value or job performed um, by the function identical in any context. If it is, then it need, doesn't need any other information than what's in the parameter, so it should be a, a static thing. Um, again, this is fairly advanced stuff, but here's an example of the static thing. Here's a here's a age coefficient for smoke initiation. If we look up by age, it'll give you the smoking initiation um, coefficient. It's something that adjusts the mean smoking initiation um, rate hazard. Okay. Um, this is this is static because it doesn't depend. On, this lookup doesn't depend in any way on the state of this person, and, and in no way is is affected by whether it's called a male or female, or it's old or young. I, the point is, this is just a lookup. It's 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 a mathematical relationship, just like sign is. It doesn't need to depend on on somebody, so we call it static. And by the way, it, it, in in any logic, it allows you to interpolate in different ways linear. So You're, you're, you're pe this is the argument. And on the right side, you just have a bunch of parameters. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these are a bunch of values. So if the argument is 0, it gives 0. If it's 11, it gives 11. If it's a 15, it gives 0.25. And if it's between them, it's interpreting in a linear way. Okay. So this allows you to kind of specify a kind of a function um, numerically where it does some interpolation. You can do linear. You can do quadratic. You can do uh, different interpolations. Maybe this one. I can't remember. But basically, and it says how to handle out of bounds, like if you do less than zero, or if you do greater than max. But the point is, yeah, this is this is like a function. I mean, this is like a, a static method in the sense that you pass in an argument and it gives back a result. Okay, this, this is something that you can add in any logic. It's called a, a table. Okay, that's a good question. Why is this? Why does this belong in person? Well. Imagine now if we had, um, I was gonna, I was gonna say deer, a deer class, but deer don't smoke normally. Okay, um, so monkeys pick up smoking, and you have a class. Okay, like thank, this. thank you, <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, dogs thank you. It's good to have a bat here. Um, so, so, so maybe, maybe monkeys, uh, chimps may smoke. Um, I could, I mean, like if, if you were to give them a cigarette, they might, they might smoke. Um, and I don't know. Um, uh, but the point is that. That this this is associated with personhood. Remember, a class kind of defines what it means to be a person, and you could argue that this has to do with personhood, and so as such, it kind of belongs in person. But I wouldn't object really strongly if this were a name. But if you start to have chimp classes and rhesus macaque classes and and you know um, and gorilla class, imagine a gorilla with well, <laughs> they have a. What mean it? Oh. And it should be age coefficient for reason. Yeah, you could you, you could do that. It's just that normally you want the the person class to group things associated with personhood, and so it's kind of a nice place for it to live. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. It could go in Maine. Yes, you, 
could do an additional argument. Is this a monkey or is this a... Yeah. You, you could do that. Would it yeah. be relevant? Like, if, you get, if you get different populations of uh, persons, that would be available to different populations, or is that still? Right. Right. Okay. So, so this is a good question. Suppose you had a class for men and a class for women, and then maybe you you put for the for the women to be this, and the women's uh, the women's class would be a different lookup than for the men's class, and um, but both would be static. It'd be associated with it'd be like male males dot you know, age coefficient for smoking initiation or female dot age coefficient for smoking initiation. Um, if it was the same, then we'd we'd probably put it in main. I put it in main, or I would have a super class that that from which they both inherit, and this would be part of that. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't repeat it separately for each one. Yeah. Um, okay. So we build up functional abstractions out of other ones. Perform birth called establish offspring connection based on mother connection. Which again should have been establish, draw a person A's connection based on person B's, or add person B's connection to person A, or something like that. Um, okay, um, and so, you know, we might define count men, maybe we have a function, maybe we want a function called count men, just so we can call it very clear what it means. And we might, that might call count population of sex, which takes a parameter, you know, say which sex to count, or something. We might have count women, it passes a different parameter here. Um, maybe we have fractions of contacts that smoke, and the way it determines its answer is to divide count smoking contacts by count total contacts. Mm -hmm. so, so we kind of build it up out of these pieces. And generally speaking, when you're writing one, you just assume somebody smart is going to write the others. You don't worry about all the details of the others. You just assume that can be done by somebody. And maybe that person is smart as you in the future. but. Um, you don't, you don't worry about all the details of what it is. You think about, what do I have to do at this level? And I'm going to assume that I have this. I'm going to assume that I have that. And then later you go, maybe you define it, or somebody else will define it for you. Um, and that simplifies your life. Because someone else can do it, you don't have to give the option of breaking up the pieces for different people. Juan E, you do these. Ran, you do these. David, you write these. And then we'll have a model. Stone soup. Um, Okay, methods and methods and exceptions. Um, okay, uh, a function tether can be defined as to be thought of as providing a contract. You give me these parameters, I'll do x for you and return y. Y can be void, I return nothing, or I return double an inch, a float, or sorry, a string, whatever. Um, I return a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so get mother, return return a, per a person. Okay. Um, because things can go wrong, sometimes exceptions are thrown, right? Um, and so we saw that exception earlier, null pointer exception. So things can go wrong sometimes. We fr frequently want a way to signal something has gone wrong. We don't just want to return, you know, uh, a, a bad value. We want to signal something something bad. We talked about this yesterday, and we talked about try and catch, and how you can try these things out and then catch exceptions to it. Um, and you remember this thing where we try this, and then we, we sort of we have something that says cannot write to file, right? Um, What's the, so like the catch exception E, the, yeah. the actual E, is that just arbitrary? Well, no, no, it actually, information that will provide information about wh where things went bad, well, um, the nature of the thing that went bad, and so it's very valuable. And whatever it catches, is it going to be called E, or is it? No, we can name this whatever we want. Yeah, we yeah. could call it FUBAR. Okay, right. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, you could actually say, and, and, and this is why I say it's bad. It, 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 this is terrible. Yeah. It, from the, so we could say trace line could not write to file semicolon, you know, error message, uh, colon, and then end, end quote plus e or dot e dot two string. I think you can just do plus e, and, and, and it will print out, and, and that's useful. And what will what will e include, ladies and gentlemen? You can actually ask for the call stack. You can tell, tell me the call stack, which will tell you where, where it was or it failed. Helpful, helpful, helpful. You know where in your program things have problems, even if you don't know um, where it does. Okay, um, yeah. Um, so if you go to this, um, if you go to some of my models on reading PyEC file, from reading PyEC files in or reading network files in, you'll find custom classes. You can define custom classes. And um, 
these custom classes, you can put methods in it and uh, create methods yourself. And uh, you'll have try and catch uh, blocks. And, and then some of the methods, actually it says throws exception. It throws this exception. In other words, anyone who calls this should be expecting that there may be a bad message of a bad type of thing that comes out. And that forces someone who calls that. So this is actually very badly, badly done. But I think basically this is what's called here. And the reason this has to handle this is because this can throw an exception. So it has to be ready in case an exception is thrown to be able to handle it here. Okay. So this is basically says, hey, be warned, just like FedEx, um, like maybe FedEx is contract with you when you ship a package. If you read the fine print, maybe it says something like, in case of weather emergencies, we reserve the right to, to um, uh, you know, to fail failure to deliver. We will notify you, you know, um, no less than than um, you know one hour after the delivery time, indicating we've been unable to fail. And and we expect an answer from you within that amount of time. Um, to do our job. And so here, this is basically saying, hey, be forewarned. I could throw something that you don't expect, and you have to be able to handle that, okay? Um, a better example would be like if you had a contract. So if, if you were a company, you were contracting another to build a building, um, you might have, uh, there might be in the, the contract written a provision that, that they can notify you and you have to get back to them and, and clean up after that, you know, or something like that. Where to handle exceptions? Well, um, you can handle it at a very high level, or you could leave it and it'll go to the console in any logic. But if you're creating software for people who are decision makers, people or other stakeholders, you might want to handle it in a more graceful way. Okay, um, in, in any logic, functions cannot declare that they uh, throw exceptions. Um, they, both primary functions and supporting functions are all visible to, to others. So when you put a function into any logic, it's visible in there. Sometimes you don't want that to be visible, but it, but it is. So that was something about functions and methods. I know I went into quite some detail there. I know that not everyone is interested in this, but believe me, one of the big challenges that people learning any logic faces when things go, it's great when things go right and people are moving around and it looks exciting <laughs> and stuff like that, but it's really that dark day, you know, rainy day when you've gone back home and you're working on it and something goes wrong, that, that that's where you want access to resources. And I hope this lecture, while some of it may have gone over your head now, I hope it will be a resource for you to come back to. And particularly if you look at that message that it prints out, I don't want that to be mysterious for you. I want you to be able to go from that zero in on where the problem is occurring in your program. And so you can at least start looking around, start doing a Sherlock Holmes on that area of your program, rather than being distracted by who knows where it could be. It could be anywhere in here. Anything could be wrong. It's not that bad once you start to parse that. Tomorrow we'll see how we can use the bugger to help us a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So uh, I apologize for, for um, my, my um